Once you've opened the supplied image, or really any image, we just need to have an image open for this lecture, um, I would like you to go back to the slideshow because we're going to talk a little bit more about how, uh, or some other ways that you could open up files. And so if we go back to the slideshow, um, you can launch Photoshop directly from your computer if you have it downloaded. Um, starting in approximately 2015 or so, maybe 2014, Adobe no longer allows you to purchase and install the full version of Photoshop on your computer and then just keep it forever. You have to download it as part of a monthly license, kind of like Netflix. So you buy a Netflix subscription and then you have access to it for the entire month that you paid for it. It is called the Adobe Creative Cloud or Adobe CC. Um, when you are, are ready to purchase the software, so you may be using a free Photoshop through SLCC All Access or you've come to the South City campus and you're using the Visual Art and Design Computer Lab. Uh, when you're ready to purchase it for yourself, you're going to have to go to adobe.com and purchase a Creative Cloud subscription. When you do that, you'll install the Creative Cloud on your computer, and across the top of your screen, you'll see a little Creative Cloud logo. When you click on that, um, it'll allow you to launch your apps, which would be Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, that kind of stuff. Um, you'll also see that there are some other options. There's assets, stock images, community. Um, Adobe's really trying to create a one-stop shop for graphic artists where you can get your stock images, where in the past you may have gotten them from like gettyimages.com if you need them for a project you could pay and, and license photographs now you can get uh, stock images from Adobe um, there's a community tab so if you're interested in seeing what other people are doing um, there there's stuff that you can check out there what's important is that if you are going to purchase your own Creative Cloud subscription you need to make sure that you continually update your apps um, the reason or one of the reasons that Adobe created the Creative Cloud is because people would spend four or five six hundred dollars as a student, that's a student price, to purchase uh, bundles of Adobe software. So there was the web bundle which had the software that you would need as a web designer and there was the graphic design bundle that you would get in Design Illustrator, Photoshop and that kind of thing. But people would buy it and less than a year later it would be out of date and you wouldn't have all the new cool stuff that Adobe was coming out with. And so with the subscription service, as soon as Adobe comes out with anything new, you immediately can upgrade. So if you purchase your subscription on February 10th, and on February 11th they come out with a completely new version of Photoshop that has 800,000 new things that, that would be cool for you to experiment with, the very next day after you purchase it, you could say, well, mine's out of date, so I want to update to the new version. Um, the way that you would do that is if you go to your Apps tab under the Creative Cloud, it will show you uh, which apps have to be updated. If you continue to scroll down, which obviously I can't because I'm in a slideshow, um, it will show you any other apps that you haven't installed. So maybe you purchased the Creative Cloud for your Photoshop and your InDesign class, so you install those, but you never really played around with Illustrator, but you hit it and download it and see what it's about. Uh, one of the ones I'd recommend downloading that I think is pretty cool that we don't really cover a lot um, here at the community college is Muse. Muse is to me what uh, Dreamweaver was supposed to be. So Dreamweaver was supposed to be this really cool software application that allowed you as a designer to create a website without having to know a lot of coding. But for me, someone who knows some basic coding and the graphic design side, um, it was just easier to always go into the code and add the code in than to figure out how to get Dreamweaver to work. Um, but Muse is what Dreamweaver was supposed to be. It is a visual way to create websites. If you want a slideshow, you just grab a handful of pictures, select them, and hit a button that says, make this a slideshow for me. And then it will walk you through the steps of making it a slideshow. Okay, so however you want to do it, make sure that you have access to Photoshop and you have an image open, and then we can move on to the next video in this lecture.